Hello, I'm Eric Snodgrass, and thank you for watching today's Midday Western U.S. Regional Forecast video brought to you by Nutrient Ag Solutions. We start off with the satellite animation from Sunday afternoon into the overnight hours here, and then into early Monday morning, where we were watching one of our first larger fires in the state of Washington. Initially, that smoke was blowing from north to south here, but as the sun set, we can clearly see uh, some of the heat signatures from the fire here in the infrared satellite imagery. And then on Monday morning, we saw that smoke blowing on off to the east. Further to the south, into California, we were watching the Klamath uh, Mountain Range here in Northern California where we had another large fire right in through this vicinity that uh, we're going to continue to watch throughout the day today. We can see here from our high resolution view of where we're anticipating that smoke blowing throughout the day today that that fire in the Klamath Mountains there is going to be pushing smoke across parts of Northern California into Southern Oregon and Utah. Some of that smoke could reach clear to Montana by the end of the next 24 hour time period. Outside of that, there are some larger wildfires in Colorado as as well as parts of Southern California, but really getting into the Baja here. And in parts of Washington, we're still watching a, a few areas where we're getting these fires taken care of, so not nearly as much smoke as we saw over the weekend. So what's going on here from uh, the National Weather Service? Well, we do have elevated risk of fire throughout much of the Pacific Northwest and the Intermountain West today where red flag warnings have been posted. On the leeward side of the Cascade Mountain Range, we will be seeing some pretty strong winds developing over the next 48 hours and with a really, really, really low relative humidity. So we're going to be talking about um, a pretty high fire risk. Same thing goes for the eastern part of the Columbia Basin, or excuse me, the Snake River Valley, getting up into uh, parts of the high country of Montana. You can also see through Nevada, Utah and uh, Wyoming, large areas here where we have red flag warnings. Down farther to the south, the concern here is over excessive heat, and we'll talk more about that in a few moments, but just take a look here at the Storm Prediction Center's fire weather outlook. You can see that through parts of the Columbia uh, River Basin there, we do have a uh, critical risk for fires uh, later on today. To the south, from Northern California through parts of Nevada, Utah, and Southern uh, um, Idaho, we do have the risk for isolated dry thunderstorms. These are thunderstorms that uh, put down um, not much rain, but a lot of lightning. We'll see the winds first here, though, before I show you where those storms are expected to be. This is just through the next 48 hours, looking at accumulated wind gusts. And you can see that on the least side of the mountains, there are some stronger winds, not only in Oregon and Washington, but also coming off of California into Nevada. Same thing as those winds go up over the mountains here at the edge of the Snake River Valley into Idaho and Montana. This is why we have this risk of of, um, of fires today. You combine that with the very low humidities uh, that we'll be seeing in the late afternoon under the heat where we have a lot of single digits in the Snake River Valley and a lot of low teens in the Columbia Basin and this is why we have such elevated fire risk uh, later on today. Now that isolated dry thunderstorm risk, just to show you this is what we're anticipating late this afternoon uh, into this evening in terms of lightning flash density. So we're just looking here at where we're expecting the sky to be producing lightning and certainly coming out there of the Klamath uh, Mountains and then also in the north and Sierra Nevada getting into Ida, or excuse me, getting into um, Nevada, we're anticipating seeing quite a bit of lightning later on today. And that extends, as you can see, in a broad sector that takes it through Idaho up into Montana. So we'll be on the lookout for some lightning later on this afternoon, just on those storms that blow up on the heat of the day and run up over the mountains. Now, when we think about the flow of the atmosphere, I showed this yesterday, I want to show it again. This is how things shape up by the time we get into the weekend. What I want you to notice is the flow of the atmosphere in the North Pacific is unblocked. We've got a trough here, we've got a trough there, we have a trough here, and these troughs as they just kind of line themselves up and move, well on the southern side of it we have some pretty strong winds. But the piece that I want you to be seeing is that the models have been hinting at the development of this larger ridge that's going to be here um, sitting over the desert southwest keeping the heat on and there is a little trough that's just to the south of it here bringing in that flow out of the southwest so uh, while we may be a little cool middle of this week look at the heat that will be coming in under this ridge toward the end of our weekend while this heat will really i think stay established over parts of the southwest getting into california the northwest you've got these systems lined up and as they come through they bring in a little bit of respite from this heat so from there i would like to just take you up another level so let's go up into the upper level levels of the atmosphere and look at the jet stream flow. The good news is, is this isn't shutting down. And while we do have, you can see it right here, there is a high over low setup. This is not the blocking type. And downstream of it, there's our large ridge we're going to be watching here. So you can see the flow doing something like that. And we also have just this very weak high that's sitting right in through here. But to the north of it, stronger winds as we press out toward the end of this week, keeping the North Pacific really moving along. So what do we have by day 10? Well, there is our ridge. 
and therefore what we're going to get is quite a bit of heat south but if these troughs keep sweeping through this gives chances for cooling things down in parts of the pacific northwest and also with flow coming out of the southwest we still have our risk of daily lightning i mean that's just going to bop uh, blow up storms on, on the tops of the mountains and give us the risk of of, of getting those uh, those thunderstorms here so we cannot seem to shake this pattern but a new piece of this is this larger ridge building over parts of the southwest so i think we should talk about temperatures first today it's a scorcher down in arizona in new mexico and western texas it's also very hot in southern california once you get into the desert but look at the central valley a lot of mid 90s there and it's cool in parts of the pacific northwest hotter when you get over toward montana but as we play this forward we'll see the cooler weather still there in place watch it again with me still in place here in parts of the pacific northwest but as we work our way toward the end of the week watch here's wednesday getting into thursday another cool one for the northwest but watch the central valley of california in the southwest here we go there's friday's high temperatures now we're talking upper 90s lower 100s for much of the central valley of california 113 for phoenix this is Saturday. The whole of the West Coast really starts to get hot. Maybe get triple-digit heat in parts of Oregon. As we work our way into Mon or Sunday and then Monday, this is when we really start to bring in the much higher heat into the Pacific Northwest as well. Talking about upper 90s at times here in this area. Meanwhile, Central Valley of California is seeing some uh, triple-digit heat consistently as we press past the end of uh, the excuse me the middle of this week toward the weekend. From there, I would like to show you the six to 10 day forecast from both of our major modeling centers. And with that ridge being a bit more robust in the solution, we do see warmer than average conditions piling up here in the six to 10 day. But as you saw, there are troughs lined up in the uh, northern part of the Pacific Ocean. So what happens in the 11 to 15 day? Well, you can see that the Pacific Northwest tends to favor another shot at some cooler weather. But this corridor in through here, we are anticipating seeing some above average temperatures for quite some time as we press into the middle of the month of August. Now, in terms of precipitation, I put this at the end just because we're not anticipating much, of course. It's going to be storms that pop up on the mountains on the heat of the day, which we're very used to in, in the western part of the United States. From there, I would like to show you what the week two anomalies are picking up on. And mainly, I just want you to see that with the systems coming in here, parts of the Puget Sound getting into parts of, of, of western Washington, we could get increased chances of precipitation. But the way this particular pattern uh, being set up, giving us that southwest flow, uh, heat, I think, is going to be on for the near term. Uh, and this is really going to unfortunately shut down our southwestern monsoon. So just something to make sure you understand there. With that big ridge sitting in place here, there's no reason to draw the moisture moisture up along uh, in through Mexico and pull it into parts of Arizona. It's all just blocked up there. Uh, this is really kind of the wrong setup to be bringing in that great moisture flow for the uh, southwestern monsoon. So let's talk longer range here as we finish this one up. The European weeklies were released last night and uh, a couple of things that I'm, I'm concerned about with it. I really want to focus here over on the temperature side of things first. While I will buy into the fact that we're going to keep this area warmer, I think we're too warm biased in the Pacific Northwest over the coming days. I think we're going to be much closer to normal with, you know, and how we're going to get there is a heat wave comes through, then things cool off for a few days, and then another heat wave comes through. Well, when you average all of that, you end up getting, um, you know, numbers that are much closer to, to what we would call average. But the main point here is just take a look at this bullet point. The North Pacific jet stream is unblocked. So we're going to get this storm track that keeps diving these troughs into place place. Notice this though, August 25th through the 31st and September 1st through the 8th, all of a sudden the models are, are getting a bit more keen on the return of that southwestern monsoon. To be honest with you, I know we're looking out here pretty far in the forecast, so I always have to call this into question, but I'd have to get rid of that big ridge over uh, the southwest in order to get that moisture to return there. So we're going to have to watch that very carefully. So I wanted to check one other modeling source to see if there's any sort of agreement here. And what's interesting is in the week three forecast from the CFSV2 model, well, look, we have that next trough coming in here. That's why it's showing up with a slight cool bias. But then the heat comes back on once again, once we get into week four. So the CFSV2, maybe it's picking up better and, and not washing out this signal when we think about the, the way that the Northwest is going to go on a roller coaster ride with temperatures here but the southwest in both models is staying quite warm also i don't see the, the as strong of a signal of the southwestern monsoon uh, in the cfsv2 model at this point so we'll just keep looking at this i'll keep analyzing it for the rest of the day today as i work on my new long range analysis which i'll release very soon and uh, we'll see how this all kind of plays out thanks for your attention once again have a great rest of your week and we'll talk to you again soon thanks